So if you're familiar with Europa, you're probably used to seeing um, global resolution images like this beautifully remastered one that we see here, or maybe some regional resolution images. But we also have some very high resolution images of a few different areas. And the area that we're going to talk about today has um, never before been analyzed in this um, detail. So our objective was to analyze potential re Europa resurfacing processes at the highest available Galileo resolution through geological mapping and morphological classification. And we wanted to do this through mosaicing the highest resolution frames, mapping the geological units in this area, and then also in the regional context, and then creating a classification system based upon these units. And some preliminary conclusions that we have are a candidate evolutionary sequence with implications for resurfacing processes, and this is based on three observations that we have in, in this area. Um, a ridge, th that the ridged plains units show varied micromorphologies at this resolution. Um, that chaos regions have sharp boundaries in the high resolution as compared to the gradual boundaries that we see in the regional resolution. And that secondary craters are abundant at this resolution. And here you can just see that I have um, an example of a raw image. This is actually the six meter per pixel image, so the highest resolution image that we have. And then below it is just the reprojected version in simple cylindrical. And the main point to take away here is that you can see that these images are highly oblique and therefore are a little difficult to deal with. Um, so this is our study area on the global map of Europa. Um, it's in the trailing Antijovian quadrant. And an important thing to take away is that we are um, in an area here where uh, we have a big chaos region and then um, a transition to a ridged plains region, or you may have heard this called the wedges region before. And this is the regional context image. Um, you can see here that I've highlighted where we're going to be looking at the high resolution images in a minute. But first, for the regional context, it's just a single frame out of the E11 orbit of Galileo. It's at 220 meters per pixel at a high incidence angle of 74 degrees and a low emission angle of 23 degrees. And this basically tells us that this, this is going to highlight structure over albedo, and that'll come into play in a minute when we talk about the high resolution images. Uh, this area was previously mapped by Figueredo and Greeley in their 2004 paper. And when we, when we mapped it, we used pretty similar units, but um, we can discuss the differences here. So this is our geological map of the area, which is a uh, reference on the left in case you want to look at the um, actual image itself. Um, so there's a lot going on, but some important things to take away are what's really crossing through this, um, the high resolution area that we're going to talk about. And pretty much we get a lot of everything. <laughs> We have some areas of chaos, which you see in green. We have the uh, ridged plains, um, only one unit in the regional resolution in yellow, and different sorts of bands in the blue, um, all crossing through this high resolution area. Um, and then an important, one other important feature that I want to point out is the low albedo mantling, because this is going to come into play when we talk about the chaos region. Um, and you can see this in the black stipple all around this um, regional resolution area. <coughs> So, on to the high resolution mosaic. Um, this just continues from, um, from top to bottom here, so it's just one long piece, as we saw in the regional resolution. Um, it's taken by Galileo Solid State Imager, nine very high resolution frames, eight are at 12 meters per pixel, and this far one in the corner here is the one we looked at at six meters per pixel. Now, this is pretty much the opposite of the regional resolution at a low incidence angle of 18 degrees and a high emission angle of 70, 77 degrees. Which is, and this is going to mean that we're going to highlight albedo over structure. And you can see this already in the high resolution mosaic. You're seeing a lot of different albedo differences pop out at you. Um, and we use ISIS 3 to mosaic and project this and ArcGIS to create the map, which we're going to look at now. So this is the geological map of, of the high resolution. Uh, the contacts are based actually on morphological characteristics, which we'll go into later. Um, so important things to take away here are there's a large variety of units, and they vary greatly from one, from one another. Um, in the regional context, we only saw one chaos unit. We now have four. A uh, low albedo smooth, a subdued ridge, a discontinuous, and a variegated albedo. And in the regional resolution, we had one ridge planes, and now we have six different types, and these are in um, warm earth tone colors all throughout the image. Um, and then we also have some ridge planes and some other material, which you see here. And we're going to now take um, three examples from this region just to zoom in so that you get an idea of what we're looking at here. First, we're going to start with the ridged planes example. 
So, in the, like I said before, in the regional resolution, it was mapped at one unit, but in the high resolution, we're seeing many subunits with varying morphologies. And in this example here, you can see uh, the lineated ridge trough terrain, which is over here, is um, very sharp and narrow compared to maybe this curvilinear terrain, which you can see um, a more defined ridge trough with a more triangular cross section. And we can compare this to, say, the, the hummocky region here, or which is actually also over here. And this has a completely different texture than the other two units. So an important thing to take away is that the high resolution is showing us um, different variations of these ridged plains, which could imply different formational processes, or at least variations of a few. And these uh, classifications were all based on wavelength, cross-section, and texture. For our next example, we're going to talk about the chaos regions. And you can see this is just a zoom in of this area here. And um, what we were really, really noticing is that in the regional resolution, there's more of a gradual transition from the chaos regions to the ridged plains regions. And in the high resolution, it's a very abrupt transition with a very remarkably sharp boundary here. You can see the ridged plains, the very end of the ridged plains, with a very sharp boundary into this chaos region. And there are four chaos units that we see here. Um, this is based on um, albedo and texture. And we see this modeled albedo um, unit, a more discontinuous unit, which looks more reminiscent of possibly some ridged plains, and then subdued ridges, which look like they could have just been mantled by maybe this low albedo smooth area. And we'll talk about the evolution in a minute. Uh, but again, important thing to take away is that this could have um, major implications for different um, chaos models. And then our last area of interest is these um, small pits and spots that we see all throughout the high resolution. So um, we have the larger dark pits um, and smaller dark spots. So larger dark pits are over here, kind of reminiscent of this. And then smaller dark spots are actually all throughout the region, but most, mostly you can see here, it's really, they're really pretty small at about 50 meters. And we were hypothesizing different reasons that we might see these literally all throughout the high resolution. The more you stare at the images, the more they just seem to pop out at you. And um, so we hypothesized that these could be uh, due to devolatization or thermal activity, uh, maybe a regolith drainage akin to um, pit chains on Mars, or possibly secondary craters. And so we really looked into this secondary craters option. And we mapped all of the small pits and spots that we see here um, in the high resolution. Um, the black is just the small pits, uh, and the blue is the large, larger spots and uh, found that there's actually a primary crater about 75 kilometers to the southeast. Um, it's called Amergen. And um, this could be producing, this primary crater could have produced all these secondary craters that we see here. So we created a histogram based on distance from Amergen. And you can see it, it does have, indeed have a nice exponential fall off, which could indicate that um, these features are indeed secondary craters, with possibly a background process going on since it doesn't flatten out completely. Another important thing to take away from this histogram is this nice little um, indent there. Um, and this is right where our chaos region, our large chaos region that we just looked at is in the high resolution. And so this could either mean, a few, well, this could mean a few things. Um, one, that maybe the chaos region is younger. Um, two, there has been more thermal relaxation of the craters, so they're just harder to see in the chaos region. Or also just maybe that the albedo change is making it hard to, to observe these small pits and spots in this region. So with all of these units and uh, things that we're seeing in the high resolution, we can create a unit classification system. Um, so this is basically what I've outlined here is that uh, we have three different um, major classifications, uh, independent ridges in high albedo, variegated albedo, and low albedo, subparallel ridges and troughs, which basically is more like a system of ridges and troughs in the high albedo, variegated albedo, and low albedo, and then these modified units, which are hypothesized to be um, formed from these other units that, are, that um, have been modified by different processes in, a, in an evolutionary sequence. And we see these in high albedo, variegated albedo, and low albedo in the chaos regions. So based on this and cross-cutting relationships, we can create a uh, unit morphology and evolution. So we have, this, this is just an example of possible evolutionary sequences um, with one, a one-step evolution at the top taking these ridge planes and possibly um, a low albedo mantling effect to the low albedo smooth planes, or um, also maybe a tectonic break of event would take you to these, um, model, this model terrain. 
And then for a two-step evolutionary process, again, based on cross-cutting relationships that we see in the high resolution, we take these uh, ridged planes, maybe with a low albedo mantling, um, and then maybe again with a low al another low albedo mantling um, to take it all the way to these smooth planes that we see. Or we can have a tectonic breakup event lead it to a, um, a model terrain and then maybe a, a mantling would um, leave us with this low albedo smooth that we see in the chaos regions. And then you could also have two tectonic breakup events which would just completely destroy the ridge planes that you're looking at into this model terrain unit down here. So for future work or ongoing work that we're doing now, we're, we're um, creating a structure map of this region to help further derive um, this evolutionary sequence and help narrow down uh, the, the possibilities. Uh, and we also hope to combine um, a topographic analysis of the overlaps uh, where the um, high resolution images overlap um, to further help derive the structure and the evolutionary sequence. And then we also look forward to the further exploration of these different ridge planes morphologies in the high resolution. And in summary, we mosaiced uh, very high resolution E12 frames, created a geological map um, based on the high resolution mosaic and the regional context, created high resolution morphological classification, and this suggests temporal relationships based on cross-cutting relationships that we see in the high resolution. And these have big implications for resurfacing processes on Europa. And this structure map's gonna help us further define this surface evolution. So, thank you. Um, anyone, uh, good luck to anyone attempting to land on that surface. <laughs> right. Uh, talk is open for questions, discussion. If not, okay. thank you. I wasn't sure if you okay. mentioned this or if anybody has talked about this before, but it looked like in some of those linear features, and I don't know if this is real or if it's something about the mm -hmm. lighting condition, but it looks dark in between, like in the low-lying areas, it's dark. Yeah. Is that like a lag deposit or? There, there is dark material um, in the low-lying uh, area between the ridges, and it could be a lag deposit. There could be other things. There's a few different yeah, theories of what it could be. Um, yeah, it's, it's probably um, more of, I think it's, it's hypothesized to be, again, this isn't exactly what I do, but it, um, it's hypothesized to be, I think, um, uh, containing salts and other things compared to just the ice around it. 